We have tried to put the models in chronological order and explain which are the most important librettas. Now we've come to the climax. Now we've come to the climax and talk about rare prototypes and very rare models of common scooters that would still be worth mentioning. Are there any stories or special anecdotes? Yes, there are very many, but of course not for the average consumer. There have been many speed records set by the Carden models, for example. Among other things, on the motorway between Munich and Ingolstadt with over 200 km h. Oh, was that a Cardan model? Right. There was a Cardan model. What year was that? That was the Siluru. That was a real Sega. And which year that was, I seriously don't know. But Cardan models means 50s, probably? Right. That was also the time when Vespa was active in races with its scooters. And at that time I think there was always this competition, this battle between Lambretta and Vespa, wasn't it? Right. And with the license NCU and Neckers Ulm, they had the opportunity to wrap up on the freeway. Okay. They took advantage of that, of course. The NSU was again a phenomenon, similar to Vespa. Many brand manufacturers of the time licensed to other countries. There, companies then built the scooter under license. In this case, it was NSU and Neckers Ulm. They later continued to develop the last Cardan models even further, which was also a very special model. I think there was also a very special prototype where they tried two cylinders. Yes, exactly. First, there was the NCU Lambretta, and finally the NCU Prima, which was based on the Lambretta technology, but the design was different. I think there was also a very special prototype where they tried two cylinders. Right. Innocetti wanted to somehow bring innovation back and develop a two-cylinder model. This should have become a so-called Super SX. Unfortunately, it never made it to the market, but there are two engines that are still around and running. These were recently rebuilt, and back then it was very, very cool. Never made it into production though, unfortunately. I think the fact that these models never made it into production is something that brings tears to every Lambretta fan's eyes. Today, there is a third-party manufacturer that offers a two-cylinder engine that they developed themselves. But the original two-cylinder never made it into production, unfortunately. What else was special? We have already mentioned the TV-175 first series. Very rare, very special. Please buy those only if you are really bored, because there are a lot of work. Then I think there was a little curiosity. We always talked about first to third series. To which one does a Li4 belong? Yes, that one is kind of special. It is at least very rare. It's an Li model that differs in minimal details and also has Li4 as prefix instead of Li3 as a chassis number. That's actually the only difference. And I think it has a few more plastic parts. It has side covers without those locking levers. So it's kind of like the DL with a spring construction that holds the side panels. Then a more modern Innocenti look on the cascade with the last SX models also have. So basically all the stuff they later shipped to Spain, didn't they? But let's get to that later. What else was there? There was a golden special, a silver special and a blue special. Especially interesting for collectors could be the golden special. But in principle, this is just a special in gold, isn't it? Exactly right. The model simply had a special color. The color is pretty cool, however, and there was a green seat to match. The sign was definitely an icon. Well, I know a couple and they are really sexy. 
I can only recommend you. If you run across one, buy it. This brings us to the next question. With all the models we've listed, what are really the most popular models now? We've mentioned the DL200, for example. Of course, the top models are the most in demand and the most popular, similar to Vespa. Everybody tries to get a top model like the 175 or 200. The hard expensive shit today is the 200s, right? Yeah, yeah right. Okay. But the 175 models are also priced quite high. Today we are addressing an audience that is perhaps not so familiar with Lambretta and some of whom are thinking of getting into the subject. What would you recommend a beginner to buy? But if the beginner just wants a scooter to ride, then maybe he's looking for a cheap entry. I would most likely choose a Li3 or maybe a Spanish license build or maybe an Indian Lambretta. The interesting thing currently is that Vespa prices are incredibly high. Lately it's really annoying if you want to buy a Vespa. You can't really get them at a reasonable price anymore. Currently, Lambrettas are available at much more reasonable prices, especially the Li 3rd series or the Spanish Jet series. So if you are thinking about buying a classic scooter and you are annoyed by the Vespa prices, I can only recommend buy a Lambretta. Apart from the fact that you are pretty cool with it, it's also much cheaper. And the nice thing is, all these models, 1st to 3rd series, DLGP, actually have the same technical base and have a good spare part supply. Perfect. I'm sure it's just as good as Vespa. There's every part in different qualities and different prices range. So there's really something you can work with. And the parts that are available on the market are all equally well suited for tuning. Most of them you can fit in one scooter as well as the other. So you have a wide range of parts or options for building. In the past, people used to say, the problem is that the parts are always too expensive. And that both spare and tuning parts at Lambretta would be expensive. Is that still the case today? I wouldn't agree. Compared to the Vespa, prices have converged. There are quite some manufacturers that take care of Lambretta, spare parts and tuning parts nowadays. And out of the competition that exists now, the price situation for customers has improved significantly. This is a statement that I can confirm. At SIP, I also take care of the Lambretta parts in the range. Lambretta parts are expensive, is an old cliché. It just depends on the quality level that you want to buy. It's in no way more expensive than Vespa spare parts. Therefore, a clear buy recommendation. Buy a Lambretta, tune it, and buy a lot of tuning parts. I can only recommend. We're almost at the end of our Lambretta 101 video. The last question is, what happened to Lambretta after Innocenti stopped production? Here we are in front of a few scooters of Indian and Spanish production. I think we better start with the Spanish model, shall we? I would do the same, exactly. Can you say something about the dark Lambretta? The dark model is one of the third series, Cerveta or Aiba. It was produced by the licensee in Spain at the time. It had different names like Aiba, Cerveta and Orba during the production period. But they had been producing the Bratis for a very long period of time. This was simply a model from the 60s as a licensee of Innocenti. But they have continued to build Lambrettas beyond the Innocenti era. There is a winter model of the Series 2, which is relatively well known, but I don't want to go into that so much right now. The interesting thing about this scooter is that it's actually an SX200, the top of the Lambretta line by Innocenti, which was basically just replicated, right? Von Lambretta Innocenti wurde hier 
eigentlich nachgebaut fast. Yeah. Yes, except for a few details, for example the front fender and the nose originated from the LR, but the rest as well as the side panels are copied. The model normally also has disc brakes, so all the detail that the SX had, the Spanish SX or the Jet had too. So actually an SX200, which you can see by the octagonal headlight and those beautiful arrows on the side panel. But unfortunately, they only kept this at the very beginning, just like the disc brake of the SX200, which was also only installed at the very beginning. Do you know why they stopped doing that? I also think it was simply a production cost thing. They wanted to offer their models relatively cheap. There were special parts that were simply more expensive. I think so they could just take the brakes and the side covers from the Li series and save money that way. I also have a bit of an impression that they just used the parts that Innocenti gave away. When the SX was discontinued and the GP came out, they continued to build the jet in Spain. Later came the change to the LI side panels. Those were actually the LI4 side panels without the outer locks, weren't they? Exactly right. There was also such a side stripe applied to the side panels. The whole thing looked more like a GP than an SX. Exactly. A few components were taken over from the GP because the LI and the Jet were built in Spain, even after Innocenti's size production. So maybe it was a simple attempt to tie in with the design of the 70s. Exactly. To get a relatively modern design without a lot of effort, they changed a few things there. The production was taken over by the company Cervetta, and curiously enough, they built the Lombretta model for a very long time, until 1989, didn't they? Yes, as far as I know. I think that's even an 88 version. And... They were also imported to Germany in relatively large quantities. There was the importer Kruger. The so-called Linz was actually the last model. With a headlight conversion, a larger headlight and different electrics, rectangular GRP parts, speed block and simply an 80 style. Anyone who knows me knows that I like these speed blocks with the red-black design. But other than that, the Linz is a bit of an acquired taste in terms of looks, of course. But, well, it has meanwhile also her fan community. Some things were also simply adapted to the legislation. For example, an adaption to the turn signals or the blinker lights was necessary. But they really still developed this technology from the 60s. In the origin year of construction, 1961, to end of production in 1989, this model was adapted for almost 30 years, again and again. Do you know why they finally stopped production? Hmm. I just think the sales went extremely down. There are some pictures of the company in Orbe, as it was called at the end. In the end, the company was really, really small. It looked like they were really running out of money. The second very important model line was the Indian production. SIL, Scooters India Limited, a company from India, had bought the complete production line from Innocenti. Innocenti basically dismantled everything, loaded it into a ship and transported it to India. After a couple of years, they started production in 1975. Initially, they really built a one-to-one -one model of the original. Even the handlebars and all the other parts still had the Innocenti logo on them. Actually, very cool scooters and high quality as Innocenti supervised the production. This was the source where original spare parts could be obtained from for the longest time. Original spare parts, because SIL parts are still partly available today.
Yes, ja, I think the company Firma, still exists, but glaub, they only produce tricycles. Noch, so so Rick says that are partly based on Lambretta, so-called um, Lambros. Auf auf so, auf so also that Lam was a tricycle, Lambros. just like the Ape. Das das Dreirad, that was a tricycle, just, just like the Ape. Um, they have been und, producing uh, scooters for a long time. However, it was not clear how long these were officially manufactured, but the factory still produced parts until a few years ago. But not complete scooters anymore, only spare parts. The other day I talked to an Indian wholesaler who said that the company still produces parts from time to time. But they have to keep bringing back former workers to the plant who still know how the tools work. Accordingly, the production parts often do not look good. For several years now, you can still get parts that are good quality, for example, the side panels. Other parts are produced in poor quality and are often still rusty and sharp-edged. This is an interesting model, as it completes the story and shows what eventually became of the tools and of the Lombretta brand. Now, we are at the end of the Lombretta model history. Can you think of anything else to tell or warn buyers about? Actually, I can only warn that yeah. it is very easy um, to fall in love with the Lombretta model. Nur, dem, if you have a crush on them, Lombretta you will always want to buy another. <laughs> I can only agree with this and recommend buy a Lombretta. We've already said it. Currently, Lombretta models are relatively cheap. Jockey, I would like to thank you for showing your model collection and thank you for your expertise that making this video possible. You're welcome. Goodbye. See you next time. Ciao. Ciao.